everybody, welcome to another episode of Movers and Shakers in Paul. Uh, today I'm super honored and also very fortunate to speak to one of probably one of the legends in Paul. Um, I got uh, the opportunity to speak to Uncle David Samai. David Samai has got a very illustrious career um, in the Paul community, was very involved in music. Um, and is also well known nationally and internationally of his tennis career. And I just wanted to find out a bit more about his journey. Um, I think Uncle David is turning 92 this year, or 93. So I just thought, um, I just, he's got a very long history and I wanted to hear a bit more about it. Uncle David, thank you so much for chatting to me. Pleasure. Um, so quickly, Uncle David, I read an article today and they, in the article it said that David Samai's story is a story of a true legend. <laughs> and I, when I read all the articles, I really, it opened my eyes a lot on your journey. Mm -hmm. And from being born in 1927 in Paul, living your whole life in Paul, I just wanted I wanted you to give me just a, a story of David Samai um, as a child. Um, was it always the ambition to be a great tennis player? Was it or was it the ambition to become a great musician? But then tennis was just more enjoyed than the or, or principal of school. Or <laughs> principal of a school. So um, yeah, I just wanted to hear a bit more about. But thank you so much for chatting to me. There's such a lot, you know. <laughs> I, th I think I'm, I must say right at the beginning something about my parents, mm. especially my father. My father was born on a farm. He grew up on the farm and went to school only up to standard four because this, the town, Tilbach, where I was born, the school was in the town and they lived on the farm. <laughs> and uh, we listened to his stories, very interesting. Because some of his stories he tells us about uh, these lions and tigers mm. still roaming the mountains. Mm. I'm not. I'm not talking about 1920s when mm. he was there. So they moved to Paul, where he got married. Uh, to a person of the Oten, mm. <laughs> which is I don't want to say it's a, it's a head of Paul. Yeah. <laughs> But he got married to her, and uh, I have six. I had six brothers. Mm -hmm. We were seven. Two died, and all of them uh, went to school here in Pal. Wow. Now I think that the one thing that we must remember. He had the chance of going to school only up to standard four. When he had to walk through the mountains there to the farm and back home, they had to send two big dogs to get him at the school because of the, yeah. let me say in Afrikaans, the ongedeerte. <laughs> And uh, so I always regard him as a person who had a very full, full life, mm. who saw practically everything, mm. from whom we could learn a lot, mm. which indeed I did. Mm. When they moved to Paul, they got married, and they lived here in Paul. Uh, we had our own house in a part called the Old Tain. 
and uh, everybody was welcome at our house. I went to primary school in Paul. Later became a teacher and taught first in what we call the Bouper mm. as a principal of the Bethesda school. Mm. And from there I grew not only as, as a principal but I grew up amongst people. Mm. I got to know people, mm. which, which, which I loved very much. That was my earliest experience. Mm. As I said, we all went to school here in Paul. Of course, at, at that time, church school. Uh, my pal, uh, by my father, incidentally, he was actually one of the musicians in the church. Because at that time, our church didn't have an organ. Mm -hmm. And who produced the, the music of the hymns? Mm -hmm. Sixteen violinists. Wow. Of which he was one. Okay. So I, I, many times I thought this, this must have sounded very interesting. Mm -hmm. We have so many violins playing at the same time, same tune, and the people also singing. But he enjoyed it. Mm. Uh, uh, he, he, he taught me how to play the violin. And then I, later on in my life, I had my own violin class. Mm. And I taught other people how to play the violin. <laughs> About tennis. I never knew what tennis was, mm. but my father took me to the tennis court with him often mm. to, to go throw balls for them. Oh. So, so your your father was also a tennis player. Played just for the exercise. Right. He was not very good player. Never became a good player. And where did we play tennis that time in Paul? Was it also in that road? That no, the, we had a. We had, a, we had our own tennis court. Uh, I'm, going to say, I'm going to name the street uh, near Off Street. Okay. Off Street, which is, is an important street on the banks of the river. Okay, wow, interesting. It's important to say on the banks of the river mm. because we had to prepare the court by getting water from the river up to the court. Okay, so it was a grass court? No, no, no. Okay. It was a cement. Uh, all weather. Okay. All weather that time. Uh, so I was one of seven brothers. Mm. There was nothing in my mind to think about I want to become a tennis player one day. My father didn't encourage me to. Mm take this game up and see how you be, can at least play better than I. <laughs> uh, there was no, no inclination. But when I got to the tennis court, I liked to see mm. how people ran mm. after a ball, mm. one hitting to the other one, back again, and to see how long perhaps it, could keep the ball going mm. in motion. Mm. And uh, so I also got involved. I threw some of the balls, pass, balls which were the far away from them. <laughs> uh, I, I, I passed on to them. Mm. So I, I actually started as a ball, ball boy, mm. a ball boy, which by the way, is the best start to get. Mm. Uh, so naturally, in just in watching them running after the ball and eating, mm. as a boy, there was something driving me. I'm going to try, can't I try? Mm. See well, what it is that makes me, these people tick. Mm. And why are they so happy with the very tennis? 
Why do they run so much? Yeah. All that. And that was my my first uh, collection of meeting with the tennis. Mm. How old were you then, more or less? I must have been uh, eight or nine wow. years old. Okay. But it never came to my mind. Uh, I'm going to play this game one, mm. one day. Mm. Because I, I also then became interested and enjoyed mm. also hating like those two <laughs> mad big people. <laughs> I, I enjoyed those. Yeah. There was never a longing in me say I want to play championships, I want to play tournaments, mm. I want to do this in tennis mm. or that. None whatsoever, it's, it's just an uh, exercise. Mm. Until one day, mm, I was called to come and join in. Okay. Because somebody was absent and there were not four people, there were only three. Okay. I thought that this is nice. You at the right time, at the right place. That time that was, that was um, seven, eight or nine. So I hit balls for them from that stage, I hit balls for them. Mm. Now we lived quite far from the tennis court, mm. but we had a, a big backyard. Okay. And I, did, I saw my brothers, brothers were also interested in eating this mm. ball around and so we we built our own court in in our backyard wow. small sized court with the same number of lines on the court with a net which, which we made from these uh, uh bags you know we say sell oranges Oh, the orange, the orange bags. Yeah, orange bag. Wow. We made we, we made our net from that, and uh, I had a lovely wall, clean wall, with a mirror on the one side, and I thought, now if you if you just have nobody here, why don't I eat it alone mm. on the wall? Mm. So with my not a racket plank, Pidgey. <laughs> <laughs> I, which, which I had made, I hit against the wall. Mm. And then I became interested in tennis. Because it was lacquer <laughs> to hit against the wall. Mm. Not lacquer only. I said, eating to such a big wall is nothing. But eating to a spot on okay. the on, on the wall. Yeah. So I drew circles on the wall mm. and put numbers one, two, three, four, five. Wow. And when I called in five, I was hit in the middle of five. Wow. When I called out four, I was hit in the middle of four. With no knowledge from whatever how they teach this. Mm. <laughs> but I thought this game, it seems to me, you must be sure of yourselves. You must be sure what you want to do. Mm. And that is how I gained confidence in ball control, which is the essence of mm. tennis. To do with the ball what you want to. Mm. I later became a member of the club also. Even before I became a member, I was invited to play in a match when a senior couldn't get play, couldn't turn up. Go and fetch, go and fetch Davey. They call him Dave. Okay. Dave. Go and fetch him. He, he can play him this afternoon. So again, right time, right place. <laughs> so all these things seem to fit in and lead, mm. lead it's somewhere unknown of mm. where it is going to. So I started met, 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 uh, 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 playing matches on, on Saturday. 
still with the bat. Why not the racket? Because we couldn't buy a racket. Too poor mm. to buy a racket. But your opponent had strings and you had a bat, or you both had bats? No, that was at the beginning. Okay. That was at the beginning. Later, mm. I got the racket. Okay. String it. By the way, my father learned how to string, wow. how to put in strings. It's a single string or two strings. How to do it. And uh, so it was just a question of finding finding a racket somewhere. Mm. Mm. Getting strings. Mm. And then I am now a tennis player. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, naturally, I, I was I became older then. Funny. Nobody of all these big people that played told me how to eat a ball, mm. how to take a racket in the hand, how to do, what will give you a good shot, what will give you a bad one. Mm. Nobody. All right, there wasn't anybody who was tennis-wise that way. Mm. They just came to play, play, play a game of tennis or exercise. Mm. And, uh, and so my father got me a D-Lappy, they did the racket somewhere. <laughs> a racket that looked so, so poor. Uh, <laughs> you didn't know which part of the racket is a hole and which, <laughs> which, which one is bad. Yeah. But I had at one point my father can put in a string. Mm. I played tennis in our court. By that time, I was good enough to play better. <laughs> and the singers mm. and played matches regularly, mm. club matches. So one, one night, when my father came home, he said to me, I entered you for a championship, tennis championship. And asked me, sent me. <laughs> how old were you there? What, how old were you? Oh, nine. Okay, nine, okay. Ten. I'm going to play championship now. <laughs> now, where is this championship? It's in Cape Town. It's in Maitland. How am I going to get to Maitland? I'll drive you to, 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 to the tennis courts. So, come. They came when the tournament started. And yeah, I am now going to play at a big mm. tournament. Wow. A big thing now. On a proper tennis court. <laughs> many, many people around. When we got to the court, we discovered this championship was not for, 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 for juniors. It's a senior tournament. And I remember I was 19 years mm. old. I said, my father, what now? I said, but you've been playing tennis all your time mm. on, on the court. It's, it's the same lines. Mm. It's the same space. Mm. Those courts are the same. Mm. So uh, where's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> you was get that kind of a man. Mm. You play. So I decided I'd play. I, I play my first championship. And who did you do I meet in the first round? The champion of Western Province. Wow. And how did he beat me? Six love, six love. <laughs> <laughs> 
But what age was the senior? I mean, you were now 19. Who, what was the ages you playing oh, against? Married men. Yeah. Wow, okay. Teachers and all. Okay. All that deal. <laughs> so I thought the matter so I'm going to play. And I want to practice more now mm. on our own courts. So I had a whole year of practicing. Mm. Because we had certain things I wanted to do and I couldn't do what, what I saw them there was the mm. way to do it. Mm. So I practiced a lot the whole year. I taught some of my brothers to play tennis. Now I have somebody to play with at home. Mm. And so it came to the next year again, championship time again. <laughs> I said to my father, am I, go I'm, am I going to play tournament again? He said, you started, why do you stop? Why do you stop now? <laughs> I've already entered you. <laughs> that was December. And I know we always started on the 16th of December. So I played. And won a few rounds. Okay. And who took me out of the championship in the semi final? The same chapter they lost to Six Love, Six Love <laughs> the previous year. So you reached the semi final at the championship? It's the second one, yeah. Wow. It's a Western Province Championship. Okay. 11 years old? Yes. Wow. Uh, I played and uh, en enjoyed it because I, I could now more or less play tennis. Mm. It's not not uh, uh, something I uh, took a chance with. Mm. I knew what to do. Mm. And I lost to this chap in the semi-final. Wow. I lost to him. And that's when I started to become really interested. Mm. If I can, at this stage, beat a champion of the Western province, I would nearly beat him, perhaps there's something bigger for me. So, so, so then I started tennis, uh, really playing tennis, actually playing tennis, getting a ready for it. So year three came in. I've been practicing all the time with one thing in mind. I want to beat this chap. <laughs> the, I, I had the whole year mm. in, to, to prepare for that. And I did beat him wow. in the final then. I did beat him then. I was really 14 or 15, something like that. And that is when people started getting interested in me. Mm. How do you practice? Who is your coach? I, I have no coach, I'm a coach. I'm a coach. <laughs> he said, no, I, I don't know anything about a coach. But no, I beat him, and that was in December. And on the 1st of January, the next year, we had our first post-war South African Championship. Okay. For the first time, they had a, so there was always a South African Championship, hmm. but because of the scarcity of balls and okay. all that. So in that year, the South African Tennis Board said we are going to have a South African Championship now for the first time. Mm. No, not for the first time, after the war. Okay. For the first time. Now, I can't join. You won't play there. Your promise 
your province mm. must choose you. Okay. And so every Sunni in every province mm. chose the best people to play in this uh, national championship. Okay. I I played and would I meet the final? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and now you know who we were meeting the final. Yeah. The one that the one I wanted in the final yeah. <laughs> to set things right again. <laughs> and uh, and beat him easily. Wow. The Western Province and chose their people who will represent Western Province. Mm. They chose me as number one. Mm. I'm the light team, the smallest of, the youngest of everybody, wow. but they chose me as, 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 as number one. Wow. Just give me that. Respect. Yeah. That wasn't the big thing. The championship was in Johannesburg. Okay. So you needed fans to get there? Yeah, we, that, that, that was the problem I had to see now. Okay. Too. But the thing is, I haven't been away from home yet, mm. so far, for so, for so long. And you're only 15, 16 years old? Yes, mm. that must have been, I think. There were then no coaches to take David on a, in hand to show him the ropes. Tennis rackets were of this hard to get. All the seniors played, possessed their own rackets. So he had to, he had to wait until the old racket was disposed of, in which would be turned be be in a better state after his father had seen to it. Wow. That's the nice part of this. There were not many juniors playing plays around and no junior tennis tournaments. David Samai was the only junior with an acceptable standard of play. So he was the only teenager amongst all the heavy weights mm -hmm. to compete in a Western Province tennis mm -hmm. championship in Maitland. Mm -hmm. So, Uncle Davy, so you 18, 19, right? So, is the tennis, the, is there no working? Is it full on tennis professional life? Or did your father not say, um, David, you need to go get a job somewhere? <laughs> tennis is not going to pay the bills. My father took me to the tennis court, mm. remember? <laughs> <laughs>